Welcome to China Manufacturing Decoded from Sophieast, the podcast where we take you through some of the major topics facing importers and manufacturers in China today. Hello, listener, and welcome along to episode fourteen of the podcast. Today we're discussing the Chinese free trade zones. So, what are they? What are the benefits to you if you're importing from China? And we'll look a little bit more closely at the Pingshan Shenzhen China Free Trade Zone, where Sophist have just opened up a new RMA packing and fulfillment facility. Hello, Renaud. Hey, hi, Adrian. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm well, thanks. You? Yeah, good. Great. Today, I want to talk about something a little bit different. You've recently opened up a facility in Shenzhen's free trade zone, and Southeast has the main office in Shenzhen, of course. But this is a different facility altogether. So I want to understand what is it about the free trade zone that caused you to open up the facility there, and what are the benefits of this zone in comparison to perhaps another area of Shenzhen or somewhere else in China?、Mm-hmm. Well, it's <laughs> let's unpack this maybe one day at a time.、Um, mm-hmm. So the, the, close to the the main port of Shenzhen, in in、uh, you know close to the Yantian port, there is an area, a very specifically、um, delineated area, that is called the free trade zone, and then、um, there's there's a number of,、uh, of of buildings there, mostly warehouses and. Um, and 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 repacking、uh, workshops and so on.、Um, and to be fair, I'm not really sure what all of these buildings do. <laughs> okay, we、okay. see them from the outside.、Um, but it, it's it's pretty busy. There's a lot of activity there.、Um, so in 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 China, the、um, actually since they created Shenzhen itself. And the, the the Shenzhen Special Economic Zone, they've always always been trying new things, right? Shenzhen was、mm. the guinea pig of of the the, the new and open China, right? And we know what it has become. It's just an enormous success in economic terms. So they 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 keep doing things、uh, here and there.、Um, <clears throat> for, there's some special zones.、Uh, there's another. Huge one in in Shenzhen, actually to the west,、uh, actually、um, just south of the the airport, somewhere between、mm. the airport and,、um, and 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 the back of、uh, Nanshan、uh, Nanshan district. It's it's Chenhai、uh, Chenhai One、uh, Chenhai Bay、uh, in、mm. English, and、uh, they they're developing it. There's been a, an enormous amount of investment there already, and this is going to be. A new central business district, plus、um, plus some apartment buildings, plus some some shopping malls and so on, plus to the south,、uh, logistic services, warehousing and and you know and shipping services. So it's it's a huge area、uh, in Chenghai.、Mm-hmm. The, the people have been talking also a lot about a new special zone in、uh, in in Shanghai and so on. And and different these special zones、um, typically come with less paperwork. Okay, so for example, in Shanghai One,、uh, in in Shenzhen,、um, it's possible to set up new companies faster, and、um, yeah, faster and with less paperwork. So actually, there's a lot of companies that get set up there, but their their real office is you know in Fujian and Luohuo in another district. So this is the the special zones China likes to 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 make these zones. Then、um, the concept of the free trade zone is not just in China, right? In my understanding, there's some in some other、uh, Southeast Asian countries where、um, they say, okay, you can get you know all of the materials you you want to come from the outside is fine. You assemble stuff there, you pack it, and you re-export it. It's fine. It's like it's never coming to our country. This is basically the,、um, the, the the fundamental logic of a free trade zone that is close to a major port. All right. Sure.、Um, sure. 
especially in, in, in some Southeast Asian countries where they don't have many components and materials on site. Uh, they have to, to import a lot of things to, uh, to assemble relatively complicated product. Uh, but it also makes sense in some cases in China, even though you, you, you can find a lot of things right in, in, in China, but not everything. Um, so, um, and, 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 and I'll, I'll go over that. Um, so, uh, so that, yeah, in, uh, that was sort of my introduction of what is, what, what, what's a free trade zone just means that you can bring some products there from the outside from you know from Vietnam from the USA from Germany wherever and it can arrive there without actually arriving in China right it's still considered mm. sort of outside China uh, and if after that you don't bring it into China out of the free trade zone you never have to actually declare uh, the the import and you don't have to pay import duties and you know and to, to go through all the, um, the paperwork that that entails. Um, and China is known for having a certain number of, you know, of papers to fill and, and processes to follow and everything, right? Absolutely. So when does it make sense? Uh, so there's several, several ways uh, it can be useful. Occasionally, <laughs> and, and everybody will say, yes, true, it happens. Occasionally you receive a bad batch of product from China. And if you are, you know, in Los Angeles, you can find a, um, uh, what do they call it? A corrections um, um, or a, a quality uh, rework facility, right? Uh, that, mm -hmm. that exists there. If it, if it arrives somewhere in also on the port on the East Coast, you can find something like that. Maybe you, you have to put it on a truck, maybe, you know, you have to bring it to, um, to Nevada out of California because it's a bit expensive there and things like that. But you can find these kind of facilities. Obviously, it's, you ha you're, you're paying the labor cost of the US, not of China. But it, the good thing is it can be done relatively fast if they're not already busy with some other things. In, in some other countries, it's not as common. And it's very often around textile, but not really hard goods. Um, so there's, there's a lot of buyers that get stuck with the shipment that actually could be reworked and they don't know what to do because if you just send it back to China, uh, well, in theory on paper, it's actually forbidden because these are defective products. China does not want to import defective products, just like it does not want to get all of the world's scrap materials, right? Mm. Now, mm. <laughs> um, there are ways to do it, but it's relatively complicated. Okay, I'm not saying it's impossible. Uh, it's relatively complicated. If you want to do everything by the rule, it's yeah, it's relatively complicated, uh, and you have to re-import it. You have to pay for these import duties and everything, uh, and then you have to declare that you export it again. So you know, it's just a lot of extra, uh, extra paperwork and and extra time that you waste in the process. However. If you bring it to the um, to, to to a facility in the free trade zone, in a free trade zone like the one in Shenzhen, you don't have to worry about all this because it's still considered sort of offshore. You know, it, it's not yeah. inside China, so you don't have to do all the all, all the work. So, in this case, what do we actually do? Well, uh, we can we can use some of our staff to do actually you know the sorting. Okay. Yeah, right, 60% is bad, 40% is good, and then the bad stuff, you know, maybe categorize it, very bad, maybe cannot be reworked, um, and then the bad that can be reworked, and then, you know, do the reworking. Now, sometimes it's simple assembly or with, you know, relatively simple tools. Sometimes we need the supplier to bring us some very specific tools. Um, and usually the supplier, is required to pay for some of that or all of that, right? So they actually can come and see how we're doing the inspection, you know, to sort the bad and the good, uh, so that they don't feel that they are they, they're being taken for a ride, right? Because if mm. if you receive the products and you do you say according to my inspection, eighty percent of the, the the products are bad, 
and it takes us uh, 30 minutes to fix every unit, which at the cost of $11 an hour, blah, blah, blah. You know, the, the, the Chinese suppliers don't like that at all. Of course. Um, however, if it's in Shenzhen and, and, and they, they can come and actually see how the work is done and how, you know, um, how we inspect what is good and bad and so on, um, gives them some extra confidence. And if they feel it's, it's, um, it's fair, they will usually not uh, try to dispute that. And it's it's usually much easier for the um, for the buyer to reinvoice some of the work. It's also right, possible okay. to 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 have some of the supplier's staff actually come and do the, the you know the, the highly specialized we work because um, you know there's all kinds of products, all kinds of operations that are needed to do the repair. Sometimes it's really really not easy, right? So. Um, and, and maybe we don't want to take the responsibility to, to, to do this kind of work or so. So they, they, mm -hmm. they can send some people to actually do the work or help us do some of the work, right? Then we uh, inspect again. Some of it might have to be reworked again or scrapped or, or, or whatnot. Then it's packed and then we ship again, right? So all of this can be done in, under the same roof. When it's shipped again, since it was never actually imported into China, onto the Chinese soil, it just goes out and there's, there's, there's no extra paperwork, right? Which is, I mean, or little, you know, minimal extra paperwork, which is great. Um, so that's, that's one thing. And actually we've been looking for repair services for some of our clients in the past, you know, in, in Shenzhen and, it, and it's actually pretty hard to find. So that's, yeah. um, that, that's a nice plus for some of our clients. Um, the other thing is when the suppliers bring their materials, you know, their, their, their boxes of products, let's say, to our facility in the free trade zone, for them, it's like the export. Whatever happens after is sort of after exporting. So for them, this is relatively simple. You just bring it there. Okay, I brought it to the free trade zone. Um, I can start to process the application for the VAT rebate. I can do this, do this, do that. Um, all, you know, it's like I've exported already. Done. I, I, I can request to be paid by the, by the customer. You know, that, that's it. End of story. I can turn the page. This is much better than asking them, hey, you've made 200 cartons. Well, send us 100 cartons to the USA, send 20 cartons to Australia, and then the rest, please wait. We're not sure yet what to do. What, what, what do you mean, wait? We've done it, you know, you let us check it out. And <laughs> of course, uh, pay us, right? Um, and hey, our warehouse is getting full. And hey, um, okay, we can keep it in the warehouse, but then, you know, there's no humidity control and you get to the, all the boxes become wet and soft and it's terrible, especially like in this season, right? Um, mm. and, and, and the longer it, it stays in the warehouse, the, the longer you're taking risks actually because these people don't have insurance. Most of the time they don't have insurance against fire and things like that, right? Mm. So um, that's... Um, that's another thing. It gives more flexibility, especially to those customers that need to ship uh, batches of products to different countries, or maybe you know West Coast, East Coast, and so on, uh, to di to different ports. Um, they, they have more flexibility. It does not really make sense for drop shipping. You know, one at a time or five at a time. It doesn't really make sense for. Clients would need that, would do it out of Dongguan. It's, it makes more sense. Uh, however, for uh, batches of a certain size that have to be sent, you know, that maybe half of it already has to be sent right away. The rest has to be kept in warehouse. And then over time, as sales trickle in and uh, the sales forecast trickling, then uh, arrange for, um, for shipments to different countries. That, okay. um, that is a good model that makes sense and it 
make things much easier with the suppliers. You mentioned, of course, there are benefits to your supplier. So overall, if you're able to finish the project with the supplier very quickly, they're able to apply for their VAT rebates and mm -hmm. to apply for you to pay them in full, of course, they're going to be happy. So, I mean, is this something that perhaps is good for improving relationships with suppliers moving forward and therefore getting better results? If you have the kind of need that I described before, yes. Um, mm. you know, obviously, you make things easier for them. They get paid earlier, they're happy. Um, by the way, it's um, for some clients, we also combine this with another way of working with suppliers. Um, if you are a company in wherever, Russia, Denmark, Canada, uh, the, uh, Chinese suppliers have a limited amount of trust, let's say, because, hey, as an importer, of course, you can be taken for a ride, but as, as a manufacturer and exporter, they can also be taken for a ride. They have to be careful, right? Hence their resistance sometimes to shipping the goods before getting paid, but how can I make sure I will get paid and these kind of things, right? Um, when they get cheated by a customer, usually they lose all of the value of a shipment. It's a huge amount of money, right? So they, 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 it, it's pretty normal for them to, to, to seek a re some reassurance, right? And not extend long credit terms and yeah, yeah, like, you know, open account, uh, ship the goods and then pay me in 30 days or 60 days, you know. By that time, the, the, the customer got the goods out of customs and can do whatever they want, right? So uh, this is the typical <clears throat> international sale problem. Uh, now, what we've done with some clients is that actually our company contracts directly with the supplier. Um, we're sort of an in, a middleman if you want. I, I hate that mm -hmm. word, but um, obviously everything is done in transparency. Everybody knows, you know, who's the other party, and, and we don't add extra fees or whatever. But, but still, we we um, get paid by the customer, and then we we pay the supplier. But the the the, the difference is we are a local domestic company, right? We we have several subsidiaries in China with. With, with relatively high capital and, and, and so on, it does provide a certain reassurance to the Chinese supplier. You know, they can sue us. If we don't pay them, they can sue us. They can go mm. after us, right? We're, we're over there on the ground. They can come and visit us anytime because, hey, you know, that's the facility. You know, they, okay, they have, they have an office in that tower in, the, in, in downtown, or they also have a, uh, um, warehousing and packing facility there in the free trade zone and and, mm. and they have that, that other bigger facility there in Dongguan and so on. They, they, they know that they can come after us, which means actually it's not that hard to push them for different credit terms. You know, payment at the end of the month after shipment, for example, is relatively common. So mm. by, by doing this, um, it's it's often possible to get a little bit of you know nicer payment terms, right? Uh, obviously, we it usually doesn't make sense to do that just for the payments, but you know as an extra uh, benefit in addition to some other services where we create value, it's as, as a total package. Um, there's a lot of things we can do to create value for some clients mm. some of the time, right? So um, that, that that's you know, to, to answer your question about the suppliers, a lot of things actually can be done to uh, manage suppliers better and um, make things easier for them and, you know, provide some extra reassurance that, you know, this is a, a good customer long term and you need to do this to, to keep them and, uh, you know, they're not there to, to, to play games with you and everything. There's a lot of things can be done, obviously, right? A lot of communication. Sure. It's really comes down to, you know, maybe 70, 80% of it is really coming down to communication, open and clear communication uh, on, on the ground, you know, face to face is always better, which is uh, sort of a challenge these days, obviously. So th 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 there's some other things, obviously there's sort of an endless array of possibilities there. Once you have a facility in the free trade zone, 
Um, you can receive products from several suppliers in China, and maybe one of the components might come from, say, Vietnam, and kit it all together or do some light assembly there and, you know, pack it, repack it, uh, repack everything there, ship it out. There, there might be um, different sorts of benefits for different situations. For example, a customer that wants to maybe keep his suppliers in the dark might not want the supplier to know, hey, here's the pricing label and here's the, here's the, 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 the labels and the, all the branding of the, of the, the distributor, the retailer, you know, so that the supplier actually knows everything at the end, right? Uh, so mm -hmm. some people like, like to keep these very last operations sort of for the last minute and then they bring the product to, to another facility where some, um, some stickers are slapped on, 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 on the cartons and things like that. You know, some extra stickers or hang tags are added on the products and it's good to go, right? Mm -hmm. Simply, yeah, as I say, it's sometimes uh, one or two of the components have to come from abroad. And, you know, does it make sense to go, to get it through the Chinese customs and, and go through the hassle of doing all of that? Uh, sometimes yes, sometimes no. Sometimes it's, you know, combined with some other benefits that I mentioned, it might make more sense to just do this in a, in, in a facility like ours, where in addition we can, you know, Keep the keep the products in 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 a warehouse. Ship them whenever the the, the customer wants. Um, hide certain things from from the suppliers. You know, do things behind closed doors. Um, so it's it's really on a case by case basis. I don't want to be like hot selling um, any services here, but sure, sure. Uh, you know, to 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 give an idea about um, mm. sort of benefits. You mentioned customs clearance. What what's the difference can you see between the sort of um, expedited customs clearance to bring things in and out of the free trade zone and the regular Chinese customs clearance? Well, um, you know, you have let's say full the full import and export process, right? And the free trade zone is like a bubble where you know the goods once they they can they can go from the outside of china into that bubble and out of that bubble sort of mm. without going through that food process um, much simpler but then of course when it has to go from that bubble into china or from somewhere in china into that bubble you have to go through the normal food process basically right mm. um, and i'm not sure we, we we have uh, a couple of very good ladies who take care of um, of these declarations. I don't know all the little details about that, but it's okay. um, it's much more straightforward. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so the free trade zone seems to me to be almost another option that helps replace the need for Hong Kong companies. Would you agree with that? Well. <laughs> There's a lot of warehousing space still in Hong Kong. It's, it's like a free port, right? Things mm. go in, go out, uh, pretty much no duties on a lot of product categories. <sighs> However, the price of warehousing in Hong Kong is, is many times that of Shenzhen. Uh, it's mm. like there's no comparison. Uh, the, the labor pool uh, is quite different. It also, it's also more expensive to have people do that, that kind of work. Uh, much more expensive, actually. Um, it, it's actually more expensive than, than um, an office person, you know, a regular office person in Hong Kong. When you look at uh, the salaries for, uh, for working in a warehouse, for, for driving a bus or a truck, for um, just you know, managing a small 7-Eleven, uh, you you you're talking twenty to twenty five thousand Hong Kong dollars, uh, which mm. is I don't know sixteen to to twenty thousand RMB or something. It's, it's much much more, right? So mm -hmm. altogether, it's it's much more money. 
So does the Shenzhen free trade zone actually eat into some of the, the work of Hong Kong? Uh, probably a little bit, but there's still so much stuff in Hong Kong. Um, I admit I haven't looked at that in you know formal angles. Uh, it, it appears to me yes, it would eat into some of the some of the work uh, the, that could be done in Hong Kong that was done in Hong Kong twenty years ago. Um, when you think about it, for example, for just warehousing and and doing fulfillment, it's yeah, it could it could be done exactly the same way in Hong Kong. That's for sure. You know, you export, you keep it in Hong Kong if it's made in South China and then you export from Hong Kong, but the costs are much higher. Um, the, um, if you do repairing, of course, you can get the goods back to Hong Kong, uh, but then it's much harder to get the operators into Hong Kong to, uh, to mm. do the work. And by the way, these days, it's not just much harder. It's impossible because the borders are closed. Right. I mean, it's not exactly closed, but um, you're not gonna get you know, 20 operators across the border to do this and just come back. It doesn't happen this way these days. So, um, yeah. However, has it eaten a lot into Hong Kong business? I'm not sure. I don't know. Not to say. Okay. I guess, I guess the jury's out on that. So mm -hmm. to, to, to sort of summarize, if, if, it, if importers are receiving bad products from a Chinese supplier, being able to send them back into a free trade zone such as the one in Shenzhen is quite beneficial because they're, they're avoiding a lot of import export duties that they'd normally have to pay to get them back to Chinese suppliers elsewhere. And if you've already had bad products, that's, I mean, effectively it's going to be a disaster, isn't it? Well, yeah, it is a disaster anyway. Um, right. This is a way to, to, to mitigate it, let's say, to, um, you know, you, you have a risk, uh, the, the disaster falls onto you, 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 at least there's something you can do. You're going to waste, you know, maybe two and a half months and, and all kinds of, you're, you're going to have all kinds of problems, but at least there's something you can do. You're not just going to drive it, you know, to, to a dump and, and uh, throw it away, right? Right. Okay. So worst case scenario, this at least gives you a better option than before. I mean, we, we have spent a lot of time talking about uh, vetting suppliers and making sure that you're in a position where these disasters don't occur in other right. podcast episodes, of course. So, I mean, there's definitely something to think about. But, uh, but yeah, some, some really interesting information about the free trade zone there. If listeners want to learn more about this particular free trade zone, what's the, what, where is it exactly? In Shenzhen, because you mentioned Shenhai, which is which is in the it's, west, but this one is in the east, right? Yeah, it, yeah it's in Pingshan. Um, frankly, I don't know if there's much information on the on the internet um, mm. about about that. That uh, like I type in, in Google Pingshan, you know, uh, <laughs> Shenzhen Pingshan. There's not much going on. There's a railway station. There's not much on the internet about that. Um, but it is there. The fact that the, the benefits you've mentioned, they do exist. No, it is, it is, it is, yes. Okay. Um, I mean I'll try and I'll try and find it on a map and add the link to it so it's possible to actually see where you're talking about and and you know the proximity to the Yentian port is is important because of course a lot of the containers yeah. are coming out of there from Shenzhen on. Yes, yes. Basically it's just north of uh, mm. of the Yentian, the, the big Yentian port. A little bit okay. north um, northeast slightly. Uh, yeah, it's, it's really not that far away. Once you're there it's sort of, um, it's an easy link, it's Great. An easy ride. All right, lovely. Well, um, thanks for catching us up on the uh, Shenzhen Free Trade Zone and, and its different benefits. That's really interesting. Great, all right. It was good talking to you, thanks. Thanks for joining us. If you've enjoyed today's podcast, don't forget to like and share, and you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and all other places that you get your podcasts from. See you next time.